How's it going, everybody? My name is Ryan Herr, and we have a tutorial today about streaming your live sets and live music to places like Facebook and YouTube and Twitch, and even simultaneously as you wish. So let's get started here. Cool, so as you can see, I'm using Ableton Live for this tutorial, but whatever DAW you want to use will be possible. And we're going to go over all sorts of things from streaming your live sets, your DJ sets, whether it's using YouTube or Facebook or Mixler or live sets. I'm going to kind of go over a few different options and hopefully for those of you watching, um, you'll find something out there that works for you and you can figure out how to stream your sets live. I know a lot of us are here. We're in this shelter in place order. We're in our quarantined worlds, our coronavirus worlds, and a lot of us DJs and musicians, uh, our tours and our gigs have been canceled and we're looking for ways to get our music out to our fans and our friends and our family. So I'm hoping that this video will help you be well on your way to doing so. Of course, there are lots of more in-depth videos and I do suggest watching multiple videos so you can really get a good understanding of using the OBS software that we're gonna be using in here, a free open source, source software as well as connecting your audio interface and your DAW and having that all work together so you can get a direct sound feed for your live performance or live set. A quick note to those of you who are DJing out there, if you are DJing other people's music and using platforms like Facebook or YouTube, it is very likely that your feed will get blocked and or shut down, and this is due to copyright infringement. Technically, you do not have the right to perform other people's music online. It's different than doing a live set at a club or at a venue. So what I am recommending is a site called livesets.com. And I'll just show you real quick. We'll get back to this later, but we're livesets.com. And this site, um, you can live stream your DJ set. It's not an, a video, but it is an audio, and they will actually ID the tracks you're playing, and they'll send out the royalties to those musicians, so the royalties are distributed appropriately, which I think is very important right now. It's always important, but especially right now, us uh, musicians and producers, our tours and gigs have been canceled, and every little bit helps, so if you're going to DJ online and DJ other people's music, please consider using live sets or another platform that actually tracks the songs and distributes royalties. I just think that's a good way to go. Cool, so with that being said, let's get our tutorial started. Uh, what you're gonna need for this tutorial is a Mac. Um, this tutorial is not for PC or Windows. So a Mac computer, your audio interface, you're gonna download the OBS software as well as Black Hole software. The links for both of those are below. And I think that's about it. So once you are all set and you've downloaded the OBS and the black hole, we are going to get started. So as you can see, I'm using Ableton Live for this tutorial, but whatever DAW you wanna use, the same basic principles will apply, whether using Logic or Reason or Fruity Loops or whatever the thing you're using or even other DJ software. As long as they have options for your audio ins and outs, you should be able to do the same basic routing ideas. So, okay, so once we have everything downloaded, we are gonna go to our spotlight here, and you can see I already typed in, but let's do audio MIDI setup. And there it is, we're gonna double click that. We're gonna go down to this little plus button right here, and we're gonna click that, and we're gonna do create multi-output device. So we do that. Once you have that, you wanna make sure your audio interface, in this case, mine is an RME Babyface Pro, so make sure your interface and the black hole, which you've just recently installed, make sure those two are both clicked. So you're kind of creating a virtual device that merges the two of those together. If you don't have an interface, you can click built-in output instead. I have tested this, um, and that should also still route your audio to OBS. But in this case, we want to use our interface because our goal is to be able to plug in our guitars or microphones or instruments into our interface put it into our whole live mix and then directly broadcast that to the internet. That's what our goal is. So once we have that done, you can also go ahead and you can rename this whatever you want. As you can see the one up here, this is what I'm using right now to, to do this tutorial. I named it live stream device, so something like that so you remember. So when you're done, we'll close that. 
and we're going to go to our system preferences and we're going to go to sound and we're going to go to output and then there it is our live stream device that we just created we're going to click on that cool so that is done we're going back to our DAW and I'm going to my preferences in live whatever DAW you're using though go to your sound preferences wherever you have your audio input and output and again audio output device and there it is live stream that's basically the device we just created so we're clicking that the audio input we're going to leave as our whatever your interface is in this case it's babyface so i'm leaving that as my interface so my input is my interface my output is my newly created live stream device cool so now we should be sending audio to obs so let's test that we're going to pull up obs here real quick hopefully you've looked at this and you'll see I'm getting this psychedelic hall of mirrors here because I'm capturing my display. So hopefully that's not too distracting, but we're going to focus right down here and we're going to go to our settings. And when we click settings, we're going to our audio and under our mic auxiliary, the first one you see here, we're going to make sure that black hole is checked there. That's the program we just recently downloaded. The others you can leave disabled up here. You can leave these either at default or if there's not a device, that's fine but we want to make sure that's there and so when we go back you'll see here we are in fact under our mic aux we're getting a signal we want it to live right around here where it's peeking out right in about the middle of the yellow so that's good um, what you're hearing is my microphone which is routed through Ableton right now but we're gonna go ahead and go back to Ableton and we're just gonna click some sound and make sure we got sound going oh yeah there we go Cool. So we got sound going. Nice little groove going. I'm going to go ahead and just stop that right now. That's just a track I've been working on here lately. And cool. So we have our audio routed in and it's working down here. So just a quick note, um, whatever your DAW is, um, this is my live setup. So I'll usually be launching clips and, and then I have a microphone and guitar and other things plugged into my interface you're going to obviously want to make sure that those are armed and um, the sound is going through your interface so that is also being sent to OBS. So at that point, um, hopefully you know enough about your own audio interface. Um, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, this is for people that have their setup dialed. If you don't watch videos about how to get your own audio interface set up and have your own live instruments living in that environment, that's a whole nother video that I'm not going to do right now. So once you are happy and you know your sound is coming in, and you should be able to monitor this through your studio monitors, because again, the device we're using, the black hole, along with our interface, it's merging those two, so you're kind of able to use both of them at the same time, if that makes sense. So we are getting audio. So the next thing you're gonna wanna set up is your video. Um, and you'll see here, you're gonna go to sources. When you start, this is gonna be empty, and you're gonna see right now I have video capture device. This is my webcam which is how you can see me right now. And then I have my display capture, which is capturing my screen, which is why you see this madness right here. Um, when you're doing an online concert, you're not gonna need the display capture. You are gonna need the video capture though. So how you add that originally is you're going to hit this plus button and then you'll see all these right here. So you would go to video capture device, click on that, create new, yes, you can name it something if you want. Hit okay and, and then under devices you'll see for me, my FaceTime HD camera comes up. That's just the camera that's on my computer. Um, if you have a newer computer, most of them have an HD camera, it's probably gonna be good enough to use to capture the video for your concert. Otherwise, if you have like a external um, camera that you plug in via USB or whatever, you can do that and that should show up right here too and you could click that one instead. So that's gonna be how you get your video into OBS. So I'm gonna just cancel that for now since I already have a video set up. And I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this since we have that set up. The other thing you're probably gonna want, and I'll click the plus button here, this is kinda adding, these are just basically, you're adding these layers on these sources, you kinda keep adding layers one in front of the next, and as you move these, you can move them up or down and you can experiment with putting the layers in front of each other and how you size them. You can see this little red square here now that I've captured here, you can make the video larger or smaller, and same with all the layers it's, it's it's really cool what you can do and again you can watch a more in-depth video to really get into this but i'm showing you the basics um, so text is a good one same thing create new okay 
because what you want when you're going to be showing your video on Facebook or on YouTube is you know you're probably as a musician, musician you're hoping maybe you get a little bit of donations from people watching which is always a, a bonus so in our text we go down here and maybe we want to have a text that says donations greatly appreciated and then we could do like Venmo, we could put our Venmo thing right there, and we could say PayPal, and we could put our PayPal thing here, and we hit OK, and then up here you'll see there's our little red square with our text now, we can make that bigger, and then it's hard to see with this hall of mirrors thing, but you can move this down, and you can mess around with putting this where you want on your video, so, we, you know, for example, let me go back to my video capture, and I'll do that, and then my text and I could have you know so when you're doing your thing you could have this in the corner and you could have the text there and so while people are watching your video they're always reminded and seeing that thing where they might be able to throw you a little tip or something when you want but so for now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and I'm gonna go ahead and put this back down here and we're gonna continue on with our tutorial so we're gonna go back to the settings over here now and general we're going to leave all that the same right now stream stream key is really important we're going to get to that in the moment but that's how you link obs to the platform you're going to stream on whether it be facebook or youtube or twitch and the next thing we're going to go to is output our video bitrate we're going to want that between 2000 and 2500 so you can kind of do that here i have it at 2000 that's working fine for me and then audio bitrate i put it at the highest at 320 uh, really it's going to depend on your internet connection too if you have a poor internet connection it's not going to give you a 320 bit rate it's going to give you a little bit lower i did my first live concert um, several days ago and i had this set for 320 but obs was telling me that in reality i was getting about 140 150 and i was still getting good sound people were happy with it i was happy with it so it went well um, if you're getting below that, it could start to get a little bit, you know, it's kind of like an MP3. If you have a really low bitrate MP3, you're, it's not going to sound that great. So ideally, you want that to sound better. And so a good internet connection is definitely very important in streaming a live concert when you're trying to do direct sound and video at the same time. You really want to have a good internet connection. So keep that in mind. If you don't have good internet, internet maybe go over to a friend's house who does and stream your concert from there. Cool. So, and then audio, we already did that, so we're good to go. Cool. So, at this point, we have our interface hooked up. We have our audio inputs going into our DAW. We have our DAW going to our interface, which is going to um, our new device that we set up, our live stream device that we created in the beginning, and everything should be working nicely together within OBS. So, we're at a point where we should be able to go live and actually present a semi-professional experience to people in a live online environment. So what we're going to do now is we'll go online here and we'll go to Facebook. Say we're going to do Facebook. Right now I'm in the live producer. And basically what that is is if, if I was on my homepage, the same place where you go to post a comment or whatever, you'll see live video option and you're going to click on the live video option and that'll bring you to this page right here. And when you get to this page, um, originally, it'll say camera right here when it says get started. So you'll click on this and you'll say use stream keys. And that's going to give you this stream key over here. You're going to copy that stream key. When you copy that stream key, you're going to go back to OBS. You're going to go to your settings over here. You're going to go to stream and you're going to paste that stream key right there. Once you paste that stream key, you're going to hit start streaming. And you don't have to worry, don't worry, go ahead and hit start streaming. When you hit start streaming, your video is going to pop up here. That doesn't mean that you're live on Facebook. It just means that OBS and Facebook are now connected and the video is showing up and they're, they're playing nicely together. And so at that point, you can go over here, you can title your video, put your information in. I would recommend putting your Venmo and PayPal links here too so people can easily click on them if they want to. And then my little video is in this corner down here, but you'll see the go live button down in the left corner and you'll hit go live once you're all ready to go and you see that your video is here. Um, one thing to note is you'll see a little delay in Facebook um, between by the time OBS is sending your video to Facebook, there's like a few second delay. 
Uh, but don't get worried about that when you're streaming. The people on the other side of the stream who are watching, they're going to see your video and your audio all together in a nice synchronized stream that should be sounding and looking nice. Um, so don't get thrown off by that, but it is there's a little latency there. So that's Facebook. Uh, for YouTube, similar thing. Um, when you click on the go live, uh, it takes you to the YouTube studio. Same thing, follow the things and use the stream key, type in all your things. Again, there's other videos on this you can watch. I'm just kind of going over the basics here. So um, the other thing I want to show you now is a platform, call, a platform called Restream.io. This one, um, same thing, log in, follow the instructions, and you can add your Facebook channel and your YouTube channels, and you, you can actually simultaneously stream to these at the same time. And you could even add Twitch, you could add more, you could be simultaneously streaming to multiple channels using this. Same thing, you're gonna, you would copy the stream key down here and you would put this stream key in OBS instead, and then use this and it will broadcast to all Facebook and YouTube and Twitch, all those at the same time. So if you have like a lot of followers and you have a lot of people on different platforms, this is a great way to kind of get it all going at, at one time, which is really cool. So definitely check this out. Um, cool, so at this point, I think we are at a place where, for those of you who are, you know, live musicians looking to DJ your original content, or sorry, perform your original content um, to your audience, hopefully you should be able to do so using all those steps and have a good live direct feed. I'm just going to go back over some of these here now for those of you who are looking to DJ sets. Again, as I said before, live sets is what I recommend for DJing. It's it, There's no video so if you wanted to put video you'd have to use something like zoom and and have your video be zoom and then have your audio be, do this some people have been doing that and have been happy with it but live sets will give you a good sound quality and they will ID the tracks and pay the appropriate royalties so I, I really recommend looking into live sets I tested it out and was able to get it to work uh, if you're using Serato or Tractor uh, it's actually built right into live sets it makes it really easy so you should be able to hook that up really easy and get started right away if you're using an audio interface there's a couple extra steps but just follow the directions it asks you to download this other program called BUTT or, or but it's like broadcasting using this uh, something that's what it stands for but anyways it asks you to download that and same thing that has an audio option and you would just click the black hole for that option and you should be able to link it all together the same way you do through OBS. And then the other one people have been using is Mixler. You can follow this link. I won't get too much into it, but you can follow those instructions. And that's another system you can um, broadcast your live audio. There's no video, it's just live audio, but it's good quality. They don't do royalties or things like that, so I'd recommend this more for doing original sets. Um, and if you're playing other people's music, I recommend doing live sets. So. I think that's about it. We're at the end here. Hopefully you have figured out everything you can use to get yourself up and running. Um, it's a lot of fun and it's kind of where we're at right now. So good luck everybody and thanks so much for watching this tutorial. My name is Ryan Herr. This is my YouTube channel. Please do subscribe. I'll be doing some other tutorial videos as well as releasing live sets on here. So I appreciate you staying connected and subscribing to this channel. And on that note, we're going to call it and we'll just go ahead and uh, leave with some music on our way out. See you, everybody.